This video will take you through how to make slideshows, image sequences and 360s. So let's boot up InDesign. The first thing we'll need is a new document. So just go to File, New, Document. Because we're making this for an iPad, we're going to select Intent as Digital Publishing, which will give us iPad dimensions here and we're going to make a vertical one. So choose Portrait here, 768, 1024. OK. That will give you a blank document with a text box that we don't need, so we can just bin that off. First thing we're going to need to create a slideshow is some images. So we'll go to File and Place. I've got some assets here that I've prepared earlier. Choose one of them and click on the screen to place it. So it wouldn't be much of a slideshow with just one image. So what we need to do is we need to bring in some more images. So if you go to the Future Folio plugin here, go to the Object panel, you'll see we've got an image object with just this one image in it and you get a selection here of different types of image that you want it to be so these are our own custom interactive image types we're going to go through these first three in this video so let's start with slideshow which is already selected by default and like I say we need to bring in some more images so you click on this button here add an image let's bring in another two and you can see here InDesign's brought them in A, B and C. We now need to save our document before you can do any kind of building for the app. You need to save your document at least once. So we'll just save this as slideshow. Now you need to go to your build tab. And what we're going to do now is we're going to tell the plugin to make a file that can be read by the previewer which we installed in the installation video into the iOS simulator here. On our second page, Future Folio, Previewer. Now the Previewer looks for its issues in a specific directory. So what you'll need to do is make sure you've got that directory on your Mac. So in the root, you need a folder called Simulator. And anything inside here will be detected by the Previewer in order for you to choose. So we'll go back here and we want to tell it that we want InDesign to build to that directory. So you, if it doesn't, you can see it's already selected here. If it's not selected, you can say change output directory, choose simulator, and that's where we're going to build to. So hit build. You get another option here, which is quick build. That What that will do is it will just output non-retina images as opposed to retina as well as non-retina. So it's a slightly quicker build process. In this case, we're only doing a few images, so it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. So I'll just shrink that down so we can see the two side by side. And we've hit build, so here we are getting slideshow, which is what we called our document. You'll see these little additions here, underscore V and underscore T. Now the purpose of those, V stands for vertical. If we chose an iPad horizontal, that would be an H. T stands for tablet, so you can also create ones with the intention of being displayed on a phone, and that will be P in that case. And you'll see in a later tutorial video where these come into their own is when you're creating multi-rendition issues. So for example, you want to create a magazine for iPad and iPhone, you'd create a page, the iPad one would be underscore T, and the iPhone one would be slideshow underscore P and the plugin would work its magic to combine those into one magazine for you. In this case, we're just dealing with iPad, so we've just got the one slideshow VT. So we'll choose that. The preview will bring it up for us. And you can see we've got these paging dots here just telling us that there's more pages in this slideshow. So we can scroll through them like that. Going back to InDesign, if we wanted to change the page a little bit, just say move this up to here, the beauty of the plugin is that you can just do another quick build and it updates in real time with your changes. So it's a really good tool to be able to just make little tweaks over here and see your work reflected over here. Going back to the object panel, you can see we've got a few options. If you wanted to add arrows left and right, just to show the user a bit more clearly that there's more things there, you can add them as, as new layers within InDesign. Put their layer names into there. You can choose what type of scroll you want, whether you want those paging dots or not. And there's, there's a few options you can play around with here if you want to. That's slideshows. 
the next one we're going to try is image sequences. Now the difference here is that rather than being swipeable, as is in this case for the slideshow, image sequence is one that will automatically scroll through for the user without them having to interact with it. And you get various options here, the number of times you want it to play through, minus one for just loop forever. The speed between each image, so if we set that to one second between each image, you can choose whether it crossfades or just snaps. So if we build that now, you see this is updated, those paging dots have gone, and it's now automatically playing through that sequence of images. The other image type we're going to look at in this video is 360. Now we're going to bin this off because we don't need that anymore. And we're going to go to one I've created earlier, place 360. We'll just bring in one image for now. Put that here on the page, line them up. And we've got a picture of a robot. Put them on 360, do a build. There we go, well, there's our robot. Doesn't really do anything, there's no user interaction. It's not very exciting. Go back to the object panel and we will bring in some more images. There we go. InDesign will take a minute to think about that. There we are. We now have 75 images here, all stacked up. And let's do a build. This is where quick build might be more sensible because you've got quite a lot of images to be exported there, very large images. Now that's finished, you can see a flash where the previewer has updated. Now we'll see when the user drags their finger on the iPad here, you can see that robot chappy is moving around in response to the user dragging. So that's quite a cool effect. You obviously need to have the images of the, the object in those orientations to make this work. But there we have it. And then back to the object panel, you've got a couple of options here. You can tell it to auto spin. It'll go off and do it by itself without the user having to do anything. And we've got resistance. So you can, that just controls how responsive it is to the user's touch. That's our first three image types. The next video will move on to scratches, zooms and wipes. But that's it for now. Have a little play around, see what you can make.